this is going to be today's uh, outline. Uh, we will just recall why fiber optics is the backbone for all communication systems to kind of reiterate that uh, you need optical fibers as the backbone for any communication system. Then we did not discuss about what we are doing in the course, so that we will do today and uh, uh, learning outcomes of the course. At the end of the course, what would you be able to do? Okay. And uh, then we will, uh, you know, as I said, this is a communication technology course. So, the prerequisites I am expecting is only signals and systems and some basic electromagnetics to the extent of definition of a plane wave, right. And I am assuming that you do not know anything else. So, um, so that students from science background and engineering background can learn this course, right. So, we will just recall how communication evolved through uh, ages. Some very basics of communication, I am assuming that you have not done any communications course, some of, so some of this may look elementary, but I will assume for completeness that you have not done anything so that you are up to the same page, right. Uh, why communication, what are the wavelengths used in, why optical communication, what are the wavelengths used in optical communication and some primer on digital modulation schemes, right. So, this is a picture that shows uh, optical communication will now work as a backbone for all the different kinds of communication that we are doing. Today when we say communication, it is synonymous with wireless communication. The moment you are saying communication, we are thinking of a cell phone or we are talk, thinking of an internet, right. So, it turns out that in uh, cellular communication, uh, you connect from your instrument to your tower and from the tower, it actually gets connected to different uh, access nodes and from the access nodes, it gets connected to the metro network and from the metro network, depending on where you are trying to send the information, it could get into the core network and get back from the nodal points of a core network through the metro and back to the uh, user equipment. And we know that the cell phone bandwidths have been increasing over the years and so all these connectivity from here to here to the nodal points to the metro points and to the core and back all that is done uh, with the help of optical communication. Now, that is only cellular communication. Now, what about data centers? When you are using internet, you are using your cloud services, all your information is stored in what are called as data centers, which could be physically at a remote location. And every time you are connecting from your computer, from your la laptop to a data center, you may be making a connection from the uh, LAN, the local area network of your, uh, you know, wherever you are to the access point and from the access depending on where the data center is located, it could be routed through the metro and to the data center and back. And this communication is also carried out through an optical fiber. And not just to the data center, now between the data center, between the different racks of the data center, people have started using optical fibers. Between the motherboards of the servers, people have started using optical fibers because that turns out to be the most highest speed communication links that are available. Now, think about your home, you are watching television in home, you have HD TV, you know, TV on demand, you have your uh, Netflix, uh, which you are watching on your TV, or you have your, uh, you know, your Amazon Prime or, you know, any video on demand. That at every home or every hostel where you are, you are connected through a high speed uh, communication line, right. And that high speed communication line goes through what is called as the access network. So, from all the homes are connected through what is called as FTTH uh, links. Guess what FTTH is? Fiber to the home, right. So, fiber to the home, the fiber that comes to the home actually can carry your television signals, your internet signals, your telephone signals, you know, all that can get consolidated into the uh, same fiber. It can reach your 
uh, apartment and within the apartment it gets distributed through the optical fiber. If you take a new uh, Tata Sky or any, any, any such uh, uh, video on demand kind of connection, you will see an optical fiber inside your home. Right? And from there again, so all that connectivity is also happening through the optical fiber. The, the network topologies for each of these links are very different. So that is a part of the course we will do what would be the kind of network topology you would use for an access network versus a metro network versus a, you know, a long distance uh, network. But you know, the fundamental backbone that mm -hmm. serves with high data rate is an optical fiber. And even satellite communication from the base to the satellite, uh, you would of course have a free space link. But if you want to transport that to a different geographical location, you would again use an optical fiber. Right? So, does not matter whether it is a wireless, satellite, internet, all communication links, um, we, are, we are trying to reiterate the fact that the backbone for all uh, communication link is an optical fiber and that, that kind of justifies why you should uh, try to do this course at a system level. Uh, as I said earlier, I am not expecting any uh, prerequisite on digital communication or any prerequisites on modulation and coding kind of uh, ex uh, courses uh, while you are doing this course. So, we will try to do all the basics that are required as we go. Okay? And as I said earlier, we are going to be looking at functionalities as block diagrams. We will get into the detailed physics of how a certain block works only when necessary. Okay. Uh, the course content, so first we are going through this process, motivation for uh, optical communication, uh, introduction to digital modulation schemes that we will do today. Uh, we will also try to see how to, how a big block diagram of an optical communication system work. Then we will talk about, uh, a, a block diagram will always have a transmitter, a channel and a receiver. Right? You are transmitting the signal from there, the signal is propagated through a certain uh, channel, in this case an optical fiber channel and you have a receiver which is expected to receive the information, demodulate whatever you sent and do the uh, recovery. Right? Uh, I mean recovery is a part of your demodulation. So, the next part of the course is, first part would be transmitter. What kind of transmitters can you use for optical communication? Which kind of transmitter would you use for what specific requirements? Right? You have an array of uh, possibilities of which how would you pick the optimal transmitter. Now critical parameters like wavelength, modulation bandwidth, uh, attenuation, etc. Uh, the second part is the receiver. What kind of receivers can you use? Would you use a photodiode, you, do you use an avalanche photodiode, uh, would you use a direct detection scheme, would you do a coherent detection scheme and more importantly, you would also want to learn uh, about the noise added in the whole process. Okay? So while we are doing transmitters, we will worry about what are the sources of noise at the transmitter. The receiver also, we will see what are the sources of noise at the receiver. And, and the third important part, what is the next important part, you did transmitter, you did receiver then you talk about channel. Even though optical communication in general would mean, uh, would not necessarily mean fiber channel, in this course we are going to be doing only fiber channel. But whatever you are learning can be extrapolated to a free space channel, okay? because the basic building blocks will remain the same. So in fiber we will talk about what is the principle of light guidance, what are modes of the fiber, what are the impairments that are caused by fiber? You think that fiber is a glass silica fiber, it does not distort your signal. No, that is incorrect. You have several distortions that are introduced by the fiber. What are the nature of distortions? How do you now counter those distortions? Right? How do you understand the distortions and how do you fix those distortions? So that would be the third part of the course. The fourth part would be, you can guess now. So the major distortion is going to be attenuation. So, how do you fix that attenuation? How do you fix the pro problem of, uh, you know, signal loss in the optical fiber? So, you will learn a little bit about uh, optical amplifiers. What are the kinds of amplifiers that one can use? Do you need to keep the amplifier at the transmitter? Do you need to keep the amplifier in the mid span? Do you need to keep the amplifier at the receiver? Depending on the situation, you should be able to judge. You should be able to figure out where should the amplifier be kept? What are the optimal locations? 
and what are the impairments introduced by the amplifier. Amplifier, any amplifier, even an electronic amplifier amplifies a signal, but at the same time degrades the signal to noise ratio. So, what is the degradation in signal to noise ratio and is there a way to kind of minimize by optimal placement of these amplifiers, can I minimize the degradation. So, those are the things that you would uh, learn in the amplifier module. So, you had all the ingredients now to build a link, you have the transmitter, you have the channel, you have the amplifier, you have the receiver. So, what should be the next uh, topic? The next topic would be uh, before you build the link, you would also need to figure out if there are other components because you know you talked about a network and you talked about uh, we also talked about you know the uh, the high bandwidth offered by the optical communication and you also talked about multiplexing information in optical communication which means that you need to drop some channels, you need to add some channels in a network. So, you would also need some other components in the whole system. So, you would look at fiber bra gratings, add drop multiplexes, reconfigurable add drop multiplexes, power splitters, array waveguide gratings only at the functional block diagram. So, these are kind of tools that you can use to build your whole link. Once you have all the tools to build the link, you will next do a link design. You do a point to point link, uh, depending on the distances you will optimize what are the ingredients, you will pick the right laser, you will pick the right receiver, so that the link is optimal. You do not have to always design a link for the largest bandwidth, you have to also design the link for the least cost. right? So, again I uh, repeat we talked about it earlier, technology course you also are worried about cost, energy in addition to optimizing the performance. right? So, we will talk about that and we will also talk about WDM links, dispersion management in WDM links, we will talk about those in detail. Then the very new part which uh, is very relevant for optical communication systems of today is digital signal processing. Your information we will talk in detail why you need digital signal processing as we go through, but that is an important ingredient and we will look at some of the digital signal processing algorithms which are specifically required for optical communication. And the last part will probably be in the last two weeks of the course, we will talk about the different network topologies. Once you have made a point to point link, now how do you now design a network? You are now moving into a slightly higher level, higher layer of communication. From the physical layer, you move to the network layer and see what are the different kinds of network topologies possible for short distance link, for a data center link, for a long distance link and so on. Okay? So, that would complete the course. So, transmitter, channel, components, receiver, link, network topology. Okay? So, that is the whole structure. Uh, references, there is a good book by Professor G. P. Agrawal, uh, Fiber Optic Communication Systems. I think the fourth edition is the latest edition of this book. Uh, we will not cover everything that is there in the book and all what I am teaching is not only from that book, but this would be a good material for you to uh, refer to. Then uh, as far as the uh, optical fiber impairments uh, etc are concerned, the good reference is the introduction to fiber optics book by uh, professors Gatak and uh, Tyagarajan. Um, then there is a system level book by uh, Kaiser. I would say that the coherent communication part is not covered in Kaiser. So, I have not actually given you a reference where we are talking about coherence communication. As we are doing that part, I will give you specific references for optical coherent communication. Um, all these are mostly to do with uh, intensity modulation direct detection kind of systems. Uh, this is a good read which is kind of uh, recording the history of optical communication and how different components got developed. It is not a reference, it is general read, uh, optics in our time, it is a new book published by Springer, um, very light read. Okay. So, now uh, after you do this entire course, what are uh, the learning outcomes going to be? So, you can uh, guess all the examinations, evaluations are going to test whether you have achieved these outcomes. So, that is why I am showing you this. Right? You should be able to explain the need for optical communication. You should be able to describe the advantages and limitations of optical communication. You should be able to identify the types of optical transmitters, their properties, the modulation schemes. You should be able to identify the receivers, 
should be able to identify the sources of noise in demodulation schemes. This is for both intensity modulation and also for coherent modulation, right. Uh, you should be able to explain the properties of the fiber channel. You should be able to explain the different multiplexing schemes. So, multiplexing schemes would mean time division, wavelength emission, space division, polarization division, right, different multiplexing schemes as we go along. And also, you should be able to design a point to point link and evaluate the trade offs. What kind of multiplexing scheme should I use? What is the trade off? If I use this, what is the benefit? What is the disadvantage? So, you are moving from understanding to evaluating and designing a link, okay. Uh, again, explain as far as the networks is concerned, you should be able to explain the network topologies for optical communication depending as I said earlier, depending on whether it is a, a fiber to the home link or whether it is a core network, whether it is a metro network, what kind of topology what should one use and also analyze, uh, we will give a little bit stress on passive optical networks because those are the networks that are going to be widely, most widely deployed today. It is not the core network, it is the passive optical links that are going to be deployed widely. So, the largest amount of fiber that is going to get deployed is to support the wireless communication, right. And those are all passive links, uh, are ideally should be passive links. So, we will uh, we will learn a little bit more detail of what are the uh, performance metrics of a passive optical link, okay. So, that is the learning outcome. 